Hey y'all, welcome to the Homestead Kings. Today we are going to be talking poop. We're going to talk about poop and how it grows things. <laughs> no, we're going to be talking about Say what? <laughs> how we use um, our chicken compost and duck compost in our garden and how prolific that's been. So if that sounds at all interesting, even if you don't have a chicken coop, we're, stay tuned. Yeah, we're going to talk about how you can get good soil in your garden. So, here we go. What do you have to say? <laughs> it helps when you have 60-something birds to have your own compost. It does. Yes. So, basically, we have a, oh, I don't even know, 20, or no, it's like 10 feet by probably 40 feet at this point, um, little chicken coop, I guess. And so... Basically, when we built this thing, we did not build it in the way it is now. We made it, like, four feet tall and 20 feet wide, long and 10 feet wide, and it was just for some chickens and, you know, a couple of ducks. And then as we grew our flock, we were finally like, okay, it's time to raise the roof. So we raised the roof, made it much taller, expanded it all the way in front of my shed, and we put hard wire on the bottom and all around with two by fours and four by fours. So honestly, just to keep our Malamute out because she, she, she She's loves chicken. She's a beast. She's she a broke beast. two chicken coops. Um, and so at this time I was determined she's that she's water. She's yes. She loves them. They're delicious. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we were like, okay, screw it. We have to find a way to keep her out. Well, right. that thankfully has kept everything out. Um, there's been we've had a couple of rat problems here or there and those were honestly I think um, rats just come hand in hand with chickens. I mean those we had them for a while and now we don't have them anymore, which is thankful, not in the coop at least. And um the hardwire, 360 hardwire has been fantastic on the ground, but that also gives you a base. So you have that hardwire and then we started putting things on top of that. We for a while we did straw, we've done hay, we've done pine straw, we've done I think that's it, right? Shavings. Shavings. We've done shavings. Shavings, Shavings, for the record, take forever to break down. Straw. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and straw Straw takes forever. Straw takes so long. Horse, like, horse quality hay. Listen, it costs more than normal. But for us, we have some leftover when we cut the rounder, stuff like that. So we absolutely have that lying around sometimes. So we use that for the nesting boxes and whatnot. And the ducks love it to build their little nests, and the chickens love to take it and throw it out of the... um, throw it out of their little nests Mm -hmm. or their little what are those called nesting boxes yeah nesting boxes thank you Mm -hmm. yes um and so we basically have come to the point where we just use mulch and the mulch is from local trees our local tree companies that will come and dump for free eight dollars a bale for straw and every time it rains you Uh you really have to put in new new bedding so we do the deep litter method where we just let it accumulate so chicken chicken poop is high in nitrogen, and it said not to put it straight onto the garden. So we don't technically put it straight onto the garden. But with that, we kind of approach our deep litter method with the chickens like we approach our compost. So there's a ratio of browns to greens. Nitrogen is the green, carbons are the browns. And so our mulch, our local mulch that is delivered now for free, of course we have a mountain of mulch in our backyard. Yeah, tractors help. Yes, that has made a big difference. Change our lives. But when I have Tiny running around, I use some trash cans, some plastic trash cans, oh, yeah. and a dolly. Yeah, it's been and she like has the her own best thing fork. ever. A little bit can actually, she can do some mulch. Yes. I, I used to use wheelbarrows all the time, mm. but I, they just don't hold as long, much as this, these trash cans. And the trash cans are super easy to grab the bottom, like, handle and just toss them, uh, you know, like, if it's not heavy enough. Flip them. Or, yeah, flip them. There we go. So... Anyway, we found that this mulch carbon, what Joel Salatin likes to say, a carbon diaper, that's what we use yeah, for sure. our, our bedding and our chicken coop, and it's made all the difference. So when we got here, like you said, like y- y'all should have seen me pregnant in this coop that was like three feet tall. <laughs> it was chasing duck eggs all around the, all the coop. But, you know, thankfully now we can stand up comfortably and everybody can <laughs> easily access the eggs but since then like we hadn't cleaned the coop Mm. i think we didn't clean it for four years i know that sounds terrible but it just kept building up and we we would put put down 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it was fine. Like, it, it wasn't infested with flies more than any normal coop. coop right. It wasn't disgusting. And, and ducks, y'all, ducks are gross. The chickens are the easiest things in the world. Ducks, I don't know if you know this or not, but ducks have to have water to eat. Because if not, it will block their nasal passages because that's one continuous motion kind of like us. and But there's as much shorter distance, obviously. And so they have to have the water. They have to have the water. They love the water. Obviously, they're ducks. They have down feathers, blah, 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 blah. That just leads to water poop. And so yeah. when they poop water, it just, like, so we have, like, one half of the coop that is just absolute freaking water, mess, sludge at mm-hmm. times. And then the other side, that's the chicken side, is just chicken poop. Yeah, and, and so just dry and Right, and so sometimes and... you kind of bling it, bring it together, you move it around. The chickens will move it around a lot. Yeah. The ducks will pat it down flat. And then the, you know, and ducks, the duck water, you can put straight on your plants. It's like liquid gold. And so, you and know, a duck the, poop, it, it right, is not absolutely. so high in nitrogen, so, it won't burn your plants. Exactly, liquid gold. So, in our future, right now we're just dumping it, and it's, it seems very wasteful, but it's what, it's what we've been doing. We have, like, we didn't build a pond. We bought a big water trough, and it was so heavy to dump, and it was at the old house. The setup wasn't right. So, we still have that water trough, and we're going to try to replace what we used. $12 concrete mixer Tupperware things. Oh, from yes. Home Depot. Yes, yes, yes. Those are our duck ponds. They yeah. have little water floats on them. Yeah, a little horse trough or the a little horse The ducks can water. easily jump into them, even if they're small, like little teenager ducks. Or super can... fat. Yes, we have one jumbo. If you got who... jumbo peeking, they can get in these things. Yeah, she's she's on her last limb. They are not made to live long. But some per, per most of our birds and animals, she was found or needed a home and... We took her in without realizing what she was until she got too big. But anyway, um, so they've been great. But we just dump them, and that water goes down back into our our yard, basically. So in the future, we're really excited because we're going to try to hook up that water trough that we still have that we originally tried to use and run a hose. And hopefully, with the amount of pressure from the float, it will help funnel the hose duck poop water straight to the vegetable garden, which is 10, what, 10 feet, not even, six right. feet away, yeah. and give straight nutrition all the time. So basically it's, I'm not going to say free, because we do have to, you know, take care of our animals and that costs money, but but it's free fertilizer. It's not any money extra on top, and that duck poop is, like, some good stuff. So anyway, that's the big, large picture of our coop and how everything works, and a couple years ago, I guess, when I started really learning more about um, how compost worked and and the greens and the browns and the ratios and everything, and I started getting the mulch dumps for the back to Eden gardening, which is just a thick layer of mulch on top of basically everything. So it helps, um, excuse me, keep moisture in the soil and also breaks down to feed the soil and have all good microorganisms in it and, and such, which... That alone has made a huge difference in mm. our production, don't you think? Huge. Yeah. So when we started getting the mulch and we started, I was like, okay, this is free. It's literally waste product from our local tree guys, like, around town. And they people. don't... People. Yes, tree people. people. They don't mind dropping it off at all. They actually um, love us. Yes. I, I tell them, please, like, we will take as much as you can give us. So they're great. And... um when we started getting these mountains of mulch in our backyard, I was like, well, why are we buying straw? We can just use this. And, of course, from the straight trees, it's different from the bags of mulch you buy at the store. The bags of mulch from the store, it's basically fake mulch. Like, it's, it's a, it'll break down eventually, but it takes ages. Well, it's been dried properly. It's been put through a And dyed in certain circumstances. Some of them, yeah. yeah. So, well, this stuff is it's just trees that have been run through a chipper. So you get the leaves, you get the twigs, you get the... And it's all broken down into these nice particles that break down really easily in a short amount of time. So I will say we probably have to put bedding down more frequently. I would say every other week we're putting down a fresh oh, layer of bedding yes. in yes. the coop. Yes, um, But with that... It also keeps the smell down. It does. Gracious. Because ooh, the smell of fresh trees, when he drops off a load and I ask him... What kind of tree did you cut down? Oak, cedar. Oh, my gosh. They smell amazing when they're fresh piles. And then as they sit there, I mean, I can dig through our mulch pile that's been there two months. 
and it's growing it like it's breaking down underneath that and becoming soil so that's feeding itself basically so when we're putting that the straight mulch on our vegetable beds or our um, perennial beds it's already starting to break down so it can get to that feeding the soil process a lot quicker so that being said um, when we started getting the mulch pile was when we were like okay we're gonna start using this in the coop and obviously we need to clean out the coop it's been like three years so <laughs> that, was, that was fun and we didn't have a tractor that year so it was a lot of um a lot of dolly <laughs> trash cans because we have our little garden bed i don't know i think and if if i put the youtube video up of this podcast it's all of our little it's our little garden the raised bed garden yeah. That when we made it, excuse us, excuse me, as I sip my tea. Yeah, don't say us. <laughs> you drinking tea? Uh, but not while I'm talking. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I get thirsty. So, um, you made me lose my train of thought. I did. Oh, when you built those raised beds, they're metal. I mean, it's a fortress, and they're beautiful. Mm. And we thought, wow, like that's a lot. Yes, yeah, nothing. Coming, Especially knowing how small it is. It is. It truly is. Hmm. And thank God you you made it so tall because we use every inch of its height. Whether we have sweet potatoes growing on it, like the vines like going up it. We have um, hardy kiwi growing up it gourds. as a perennial. Or we or always gourds. have our gourds run up. And our beans. Yeah, I mean, the sides that I was like, why are these 10 feet tall? It's amazing now. I love it. So anyway, we have that garden bed which is on our blog, and I can put them in the show notes on how we made that. Because um, it's great, especially for, like, a suburban backyard. It's perfect size. Mm. But eventually we wanted more food production space, especially for, like, the squashes and the things that tend to run and take over everything. So we asked our neighbor. She has perfect sun in her driveway, and which is we use her driveway. She's so nice, y'all. And we use her driveway to get to our backyard. And... We said, okay, we can't put it in our backyard because the dogs would eat everything. The front yard doesn't get, yeah, doesn't get good sun because there's so many trees. And then we started making the food for us, so it's getting less sun Mm. on on ground level. Mm -hmm. So we asked her, and we'll do another um, podcast about that, right? About the raised beds and how we we built those for free, and we actually used our horse compost. But those were great. So anyway, we have those two. So it was a lot of trucking through the yard with this dolly and trash can full of chicken poop. And it, I was, I was sore. I was sore. Because it was five years worth of chicken and, and duck. Three. three years, right. Three years, because it was two years ago. Yeah. Whatever. It was forever. Yeah, and I don't recommend it. We were like six inches tall in that coop. And the, and the coop was only three feet tall. All right. That was the worst part was getting it out when it was so freaking short. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's why we didn't clean it. I mean, that's, let's right. be real. That's why we didn't clean it. Was it was annoying to walk in it. So when you're planning your so, chicken coop. Right. Make sure you can walk in make it for sure gracious you can walk. sake. Those little cute ones, those are great. Yeah. No. Try to be able to walk in your coop. And we call it a coop. It's, it's really just a run. Oh, yeah. We it's have a giant, giant run, run. Right. and we have little structures that they can sleep in, but they they don't no. choose to. We have, like, one fat chicken who can't get up on a roosting <laughs> limb that we don't put in there. talk about Helga like that. Helga is large. She is just, she's big-boned, yes. and she prefers to be completely covered. Yes. So she, anyhow. Um, <laughs> Helga. Got your back, Helga. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, side note. When you have chickens, people just give you more chickens. It's, it's kind of like that with everything. I turned down a lot of animals. But literally last week, some guy came. I heard the gate chain because we have gates everywhere, so you can always tell when someone's somewhere. I heard a gate chain and didn't didn't see our neighbor, Miss Diamond. It's what, what Peanut, what, it's what peanut what, calls her. Yeah. Miss Diamond's yes. our neighbor. She's code name for our neighbor. <laughs> um, so we didn't see her come, and I was like, well, what? Who is that? So we walked around, and this older gentleman, he was sweet as can be, and he goes, I have been to four houses. Someone told me you have chickens. Did you lose one? I said, no, sir, because every day we count because, you know, Never they know. could be eaten. They could get lost. They're, they're, you know, they have minds of their own. Well, he had this chicken in his yard, cute little 
um, Bard Rock, I think, is her breed. She's adorable. And he, he goes, I don't know what to do with her. I can't find her home. I said, um, okay. I said, well, he goes, she's going to get eaten in my yard. Like, I don't, I said, well, you know, what's well, one more. So that's literally how we accumulate, not always from a neighbor who's found a chicken, but people giving us chickens is how, not to say that you don't get excited when we go to the local store and you buy like eight chickens at a time. Well, you're not going to buy one. No, you get one or two of every breed. I It used to be me, y'all. It used to be me, and now it is passed to him. I always said that I would be the one who would buy too many animals. We just needed to be prepared for them. Well, we are. All right, here we go. And in a couple of weeks, we're about to thin out some ducks. Oh, wish us luck. We'll, we'll maybe do a podcast about that if it goes well. I Our feel first it. time. Yeah. We'll We've see. never slaughtered anything. But right. we have so many males. So many male mallards. Anyway, off topic. So, where were we? About the compost and the... Sure, good for your garden. Del- oh, and Delilah. We named the chicken Delilah. She's crazy chicken. We have to chase her everywhere. Um, but anyway, Peanut loves her. We always chase in Delilah. So, anyhow, three years worth of chicken coop compost. We did put it straight on our new raised beds that year that we made on the ground level. Um, they're about six to eight inches off the ground. And we covered them in mulch and we let them sit. So you let them sit. I would, I'm sure experts say a, a while, like a couple months. We honestly only let things sit because I'm very impatient for like two weeks, if that. Um, it's good for it to get like a good hard rain on it. I have found. Yes. And that's incredibly helpful. That's the other thing is that in our location, we get a lot of rain, um, and we get really hot temperatures on average. I mean, we're in South Georgia, so that helps. You know, the sun beating on it, bake it out. The rain comes, and sometimes in the same day. So those kinds of things help us have a shorter timeline or lack of patience. So I would, um, you know. I wouldn't follow our timeline specifically, depending on where you live. Right. And, of course, you can always look up, like, I guess. Yeah, Google knows best. Chicken coop expert. (laughs) Really? Wait. Is that what you would Google? Well, I mean, what do you Google? What to do with my chicken compost in the garden. I know. I said, who could you look up? What kind of expert would know that? Oh, I don't know. Google it. (laughs) So, but that's what we found. And we've been doing it for two plus years now. And so what we do... Now, with our mulch bed, our mulch chicken coop bedding, we clean it out once, twice a year. So once before the spring garden reset, we call them resets, and then once before the fall garden reset. And right now, the way it's worked out is we're alternating which garden it's going to. So last spring, we did a big coop clean, and it went straight to the Miss Diamond's driveway's garden beds. And those, gosh, those are like, that's basically market garden length. That's 50 Mm feet-ish by probably not even two feet, probably by three feet because it's pretty deep. You think two feet? What are you talking about? Our raised beds over there. Yeah, but what's two feet? Like height? width. Like from? Depth? Depth, Yeah, they're 50 by five. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, so we can get a pretty. We get a lot in there. Yeah, we get a lot in there. Um. But then this year, because I guess we didn't put much in there last year in the in the super tall beds. What are those two and a half feet? Yeah, the metal those beds. Are huge. Yeah, those are really tall. Um, it took the entire coop. I mean, you clean that coop down to the bare bones. You got way more into it than I was able to by myself, and it it barely filled to the top. So we put the fall reset mulch or bedding what do I keep calling it compost straight into the garden and we also took we do our household compost anything that can't be eaten by the chickens we have a um and this is where I'll go ahead and tell you that we in no way know what we're doing mm -mm. when it comes to compost we should not have put our compost into the garden it should be fine but you know all the ever all the byproducts that come from stuff composting on average are normally not very good for your plants. But we seem to be get away with it every year, so we just keep doing what it. What do you mean, byproducts? Like while it's actually breaking down, you don't always oh, want that. Actual well, no, but kill. we put that way deep underneath 
the chicken compost. But well, we've been very lucky when it comes to actually putting our compost down. Well, so here's the deal: we do know what to do. Right, we still do it. We don't do it because we're lazy. Yeah. When it I comes did, to the compost, I didn't compost. say we didn't know what to do. You said you said we don't. We're not. I no. said we're not very good at it. Yeah. Right. Well, which is true. Because honestly, we okay. So we bought these. We're fans of these big trash cans that you can get at, at your hardware store, and you drill holes throughout them, let the air get in. And then that's where you, we have four of them. That's where we put our household compost waste. We have a little bucket inside, and then we carry it out there. Well, then we put cardboard in there. We'll put paper bags, anything for your carbon. And you want your more carbon to household ratio, like to green ratio, nitrogen. And I'm going to be honest with you. We don't really... We don't really pay attention no, to it. No, we throw all the crap in there. In the we way just throw all sorts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're supposed to turn it every day. You're supposed to keep it moist but not soaking. We don't. We just we just let it go do its thing. And sometimes when we go to pour it out, like literally. And, and it's not like it's hard to turn these trash cans. You roll them over and you roll them if, as long as they're not super and heavy. they're full, they're heavy. Well, they're, they're not, not easy, and then to get an actual dump on it, yeah, it's kind of well, a Well, we had bungee butt. cords, and it was really easy, but they... Right, and then they dry rotted they in, like, a year, in. because yeah, that was we have super sun and a lot of rain, and this is right. how these things work. So, so we're uh, working, looking at different avenues of doing this. Are we? Yeah. Oh, I like my... I'm yeah. fine with the system that we are lazy on, mm-hmm. because we always put it down first. So when we're doing a garden reset, we throw our household compost, which right, Keith said isn't always broken down but we never put like i never put weed seeds in there that would come up sometimes volunteer plants come of it because they weren't baked enough to be unable to produce or create themselves and that's okay this year a volunteer pumpkin came out and i've been trying to grow pumpkin for years this is finally the first year i really have a good harvest of pumpkins because i found a seminal pumpkin which is good to our local area um but a pumpkin came out of the compost and i was like I didn't know what it was until a pumpkin grew, and I was like, cool. I've been, like, I've been actively trying to do that for years, and here it is. It just popped up, and so I'm totally fine with volunteer plants. I think they're cool, and I don't care where they go because I'm not a, you know, very strict, every six inches perfect row gardener. I'm just a, if it grows, I can eat it, and I'm happy. So we do that layer, and then we do our chicken compost layer. But if you don't have chickens... And you've gotten this far and you've listened to all this about our chickens and ducks. I am certain somewhere near you is within driving distance, you can get good compost. We have locally, for anybody local, we have Savannah Victory Gardens who sell a wonderful compost mixture. And it's very affordable, much more affordable than buying bags of soil at the hardware store. And it's beautiful. I mean, when you run your hands through that chick- that compost soil, it's like butter. It's like just falls off your hands. <laughs> like it's so amazing. Butter's not a good analogy. That's perfect. Okay. I'm told I was what would you call it? I was always wanting my compost is butter. What would you call it? Seems like real good dirt. Butter's a fat and oil and it's not allowed in compost. Right. <laughs> I have no comparison. Got it. Okay. Just good soil. They do a great job. They do. And so I'm sure there's someone around you somewhere that you could find that available and we would put a tarp on a little tiny trailer and they would dump it on and we'd bungee the tarp together and that's how we would get it home um because he you never wanted to put that in your truck you didn't want to put just straight soil in your truck (laughs) or have a a tractor like anywhere near your truck to dump because yeah not a could be a bad situation so anyhow once all that's said and done we get the garden reset then we take our mulch, and we do, I'd say, probably an inch-ish layer of mulch on top. And oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. At least an inch, because you got to protect your soil. Right, and we we made big mistakes protecting our soil the first few years of the metal raised beds. Um, and they were metal, so I'm sure it was it baked out even more. Well, it's also all the stuff we put in there. I mean, we, with all the... We did all sorts of logs and limbs and just anything to fill the freaking things because they were huge. They're two and a half feet tall. So, you know, to fill that with dirt was just shockingly expensive and very heavy. And so we did all sorts of stuff, and then it would, you know, you do a bunch of logs and you stack them up nicely. There's still going to be places it sunk faster because it was the first year. There's all sorts of things like that that um, 
kind of mess with our setup. And then absolutely the metal, the galvanized metal, um, reflected and made burn right. a few things. Which is great for some plants. Some oh, plants absolutely. love that. Our cherry tomatoes in there. Oh my gracious. Like, oh, there was one year I was like, please don't ever hand me another cherry tomato. I've eaten so many. But then again, you know, you don't get tired of cherry tomatoes. And when I'm, I've said it before, I'll say it again. One of the coolest things about having a garden perennial or annual is you can literally walk in your yard and munch and snack as you're walking around. I think that's so cool. So anyway, um, once we figured out that, yes, those people who talk about covering your soil with mulch actually know what they're talking about. And I watched that Back to Eden gardening um, movie, which I believe it was on Amazon or something. I don't remember. It it all clicked, and I was like, okay. So I've been getting, We. it's not that we didn't get food. It was every year we had to fully replenish, and every year because we didn't mulch well, the weeds were out of control, and our dollar weed here is the worst, and it has these little runners that go millions Everywhere. of feet, and it's awful. So the mulch itself has cut down on so much labor. I don't have to water every day. Um, And even in the really deep part of the summer, we just have a... We didn't even use it this year at all. We didn't need it. The soaker hose, and we just run it around. Um, And because of the mulch, people always ask me, oh, I bet it takes you ages to water all this. I don't water it. Now, we had a very wet summer. Sometimes we have a dry one where I do need to water a little more often. I always water when the plants are young. You always want to you know, get them off to a good, healthy start. Yeah. But it's amazing. It's cut, it's a lot of labor up front, whether you're doing your chicken bedding or your chicken compost and the labor intent, trying to get all of that out. That's no easy task. Um, We found a pitchfork works best getting, cutting through all of that hard when it gets compacted Um, and then hauling it and then dumping it and then spreading it and then mulching it. All of that is, very labor intensive I'm not knocking in I mean it depends on how big your garden is of course ours is we, we did this we did, we did this to ourselves right so it's really not that big of a deal well yes, it makes you sweat and it's hard and absolutely it's heavy for sure but as long as you're listening to music you'll be okay well and when we made the metal raised garden beds we didn't own any utility equipment we didn't have a mule we didn't have a tractor so we can't get those things in there the other bed, you literally just pile everything in the mule or the tractor and you go dump it, and that makes a world of difference. Yeah. So it depends on your setup, too. I mean, you have literally talked about ripping off the front of the raised beds <laughs> so that you can drive your the tractor in there. It's not ripping off the front. It's hinging the front. Got it. Like so a garage. It, like a garage. <laughs> so that the whole thing just opens up and I can pop, 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 pop right on in, and it's a beautiful thing. Well, I'm sure we'll get there as we get you older. Oh, well. Yeah, because... I love hinges. Our dolly trash can thing. It's a pain in the butt. It works. Oh, it's a beautiful thing. It's awesome. It just, you know. But, yeah. It would be nice to do it with a tractor. There's a reason. The there's reason a reason God made tractors. There's a reason there's machinery in the world. Um, and you get plenty of exercise elsewhere. It's not like it's our, you know. I'm banking on this reset garden every six months to keep me in shape. So, once all of that's, all of that's done, and if. I actually have the patience to wait. Never. We let the garden sit for a little bit. Let it, for the like record, I said. Everyone has different definitions for things. This is like a big thing I like to point out. A little bit is like three days, maybe, for Kira. That is a little bit. If you want to let it set, like a really set for a long time, that's maybe two weekends. And that's only if we're super busy and she doesn't have time because... If she had time, she'd have planted something. That's just the way this works. Well, and so, and the hard part about fall gardening, spring gardening, I'm not going to call it easier, but it feels easier because, like, I can start seeds in the greenhouse. It's warmish here around February. Yeah, but we could still have a freeze, but the greenhouse saves us. Right. Right. We Whereas, don't, there's no way for a greenhouse to save you if we get a freaking 100 degree day like exactly. in October. Right. So, like, our August this year was sweltering. Not not as hot as normal. I'll give it that. We've had a mild summer it's compared August. to past. But it's I can't, I'm not going to. Kale seeds will not, no. <laughs> will not go 
even outside, it's just too hot. So our fall gardening is really stunted by our heat here. It has to start much later. We don't get a hard frost till ooh, I'd say February. No, no, so middle of November maybe. <laughs> Um, We're not going to get a hard frost. I mean, we normally wear shorts and t-shirt on Christmas. Like, right. that's how it, We have cold days, but for the most part, they're I mean, 70s, 80s. Here's been complaining for two weeks that we're going to hit 50 this week. Yeah. Right. Like, I don't know what that's nightmares. about. Nightmares. There's a reason. I mean, we were born and raised here, but there's a reason we stayed here. But, yeah. Anyway. So. Very simple. I, I have a greenhouse. I have the seeds to plant in the greenhouse. Seeds are always cheaper than buying transplants. We typically buy transplants when it comes to certain items, um, especially kale for the fall. Especially kale. Yeah. And and you like to buy broccoli starts broccoli. for the fall. Yes. So that's what we've put in this little, or the, we say our little beds, but our metal raised garden. And this colder weather, actually, I, <laughs> the first time we planted kale a few years ago, and Things were going to get a little chilly. It was a our spring harvest, and we still had, like, one more close frost. I freaked out. and covered them in tarps. I, I had no idea that frost makes kale sweeter and tastes better. <laughs> no idea. Because as a summer wears on, as heat comes, kale gets bitter. Oof. Like, right now, you can pick it up, eat it off, and it's fine. Like, with your starts or in a couple months, in the summer, it's just bitter. And you could come in and dress it and try to hide it, like, in a pan. But just eating it straight, like in a salad, it's, it's not as tasty as you would hope for. So, for the fall, if you're thinking about starting a garden, if you have a garden, if you have chickens, ducks, if you don't, don't get discouraged. If you haven't mulched before, try mulching. Even if you don't want a mountain of mulch in your backyard... You can get something. Straw is always a good top mulch for a garden. It might not be the best bedding for chickens because it takes ages to break down. That probably makes it really good for a garden. It makes it a good cover for a garden um, because ideally you just want to trap in the nutrients. You don't want the sun to bake out your soil and make it a desert and your plants have nothing to eat and thrive on. And we've had, we've had a lot of success in this. Like I know that... Some, we do do things wrong. The compost, I know for sure we do wrong. And um, I know how to write it. We just don't do it. But it hasn't seemed to matter. And every the past two years when we've actually, like, applied ourselves to this and not just, you know, well, we'll just buy a couple bags of dirt and throw some plants in it and hope for the best, it's been prolific. Like, we've had more food then we know what to know what to do with right i mean one year we had so much broccoli we were freezing it because we couldn't eat it all what's the point i know i know that's that is that's what we're looking to do it's not so a lot of people have like hobby gardens and i guess that's what we did this is still a hobby garden for us we just want to make our hobby garden feed us feed us a lot it's a hobby garden definition by the irs if you do not make money it is a hobby Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's so true. It's a hobby garden. We just do the best we can to make as much as possible. And we can't help ourselves. I mean, I'm not just going to do something do it half-ass. I mean, that's just the way it works. So Right. Gonna, well, and like, it was super really cool. So we grew kale, not kale, excuse me, collards, and harvested them. I guess I harvested them. No, it was, so we grew it after. It was like in a short, a late winter crop. I harvested them early spring one year. Well, next New Year's rolled around. You know, you have you eat your collards for money, right? And that what they well. I have no idea. Yes, well, you make Hoppin' Johns every year. I don't know what it means. I just make it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's wealth. I well, think it's we, all for wealth. I had blanched Everything them. Everything we eat is for money. We're yeah. very selfish people. The Hoppin' Johns, you think? Well, Everyone. I guess I don't know what Black Eyed Peas stand for. I think money. It's, I think it's probably money too. But the ham hocks don't. Yeah, that's hand. for money. No, it's, it's all for money. One's <laughs> money, one's wealth, one's coin. We just like Alvin John. Right. It's cornbread just good. on New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't want cornbread and black eyed peas after New Year's Eve? Yeah, so that's some good stuff. Well, anyway, I had, blanched, I had blanched the collards. And so we had our basically fresh out of the freezer collards. Fresh out of the freezer. Well, they were, they were frozen. 
you know, they were fresh when I put them in there. And they were delicious. <laughs> they were. Remember we used to eat canned collars when we were growing up, and that, those, mm-mm. No. And I didn't eat them. No, yeah, because they, mm. I wouldn't eat them. They're not good. No. They're slimy. I don't, don't like them. Not good. These are amazing. And if you can't grow your own collars, someone hopefully near you has fresh collars because they make a world of difference. So, collars are definitely on the list. We have a, I, we took up the entire raised metal bed with kale and lettuce and some broccoli. So, Very that's excited. done. Yep. Like, there's no more space. Radishes are one of the easiest cold crops you can plant. Literally, you just, like, you don't even have to really plant them. The seeds are so small, you just kind of rake in a little bit and, like, literally toss your seeds where you've kind of opened up the soil a little bit and then rake over a thin layer of soil. And before you know it, they will be everywhere. Now, of course, you can also plant them in a row and keep them strategic so they don't crowd each other and actually get to their proper size. But you can eat their greens. You can eat them. They're delicious. And then, um, which we hadn't, last year was like the first year we really grew radish, and they're so good on salads. I even sauteed them, and I thought they were delicious. I don't know if you're supposed to or not, but I did. It's like when we used to cook cucumbers. And people were like, you can't cu- cook cucumbers. And we were in college, and cucumbers were cheaper than zucchinis. And we're like, uh, yeah, we can, and they're delicious. But we haven't cooked a cucumber since. <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> so. I've been eating a cucumber forever. Yeah. So, um, no, you, you eat the home refrigerator pickles. That's a cucumber. That's a pickle. <laughs> so, anyway, um, also carrots. Carrots are a little bit hard to germinate. Somewhere on the YouTube, I've, someone said to put down like a board, like a piece of wood on top of your seeds for like three to five days to let them germinate. And I've had really good success with that. I don't even like carrots. I think carrots are gross. But when you grow them and you harvest them at a proper time, they're really sweet. So they're really good. Um, and I've never tried like the smaller rainbow colored, but I have those seeds this year, so I'm really excited about trying those. What you you got kale and broccoli, but what else are you excited about growing for fall? Radishes. Radishes? Yeah, collards. Um beets. Cabbage. We have yet to have beets. good success with beets. Yeah. They're always so small. And Swiss chard's yummy. Yeah, it's pretty when good. When you saute Swiss chard. Mm-hmm. So um, basically when you're looking in, for those of you who don't know, I just found this out a couple years ago. Truly I, I I always knew about certain things, but I just never applied it, I guess. And when I started looking at UGA, for anybody in Georgia, UGA has a planting chart, a schedule, and it's based for middle Georgia. Well, if you subtract two weeks in the fall, we're two weeks behind in the fall and two weeks ahead in the spring. I said that right, right? Yeah. Yes, two weeks behind in the fall. So we, our frost dates later. But... It has this great chart. Like onions are a fall winter crop. Um, I already said carrots, kohlrabi. What's the other one? Pak pak choy. Pak chow. Pak chow. Which we planted those last year and didn't like turnips. Oh my gosh, turnips and rutabagas last year. Rutabagas. You only grow those because you like to say it. Ah, they're so good. Thanks, rabbit. They were so good. Turnip chips. Like, because they have this, like, horseradishy spiciness to them. They're good. Dip them in honey. Mm. Love them. So, all the things like that. Leafy green, underground, those types of things. Even in our warm, humid climate, they do pretty well here. I, I think it might be a later winter crop. Not in your, like, I'm not going to get turnips in November. But by January, February, I mean... We had turnips the size of tiny last oh, year. Oh, yeah, they're huge. They were two feet Definitely. tall with yeah. the greens, which are also greens, edible. Right. Yeah. So I really want to work on beets this year because for some reason, even though those seeds are very easy to germinate and grow. Yeah, we're just bad at it. I just, they have just, and I, I think, you know, with a carrot, you want your soil to be a little bit loose underneath so it doesn't, like, hit a rock and split or stun its growth. You want it to get long. And maybe with the beets... We need to try that. Their seeds are really cool, though. They're like these little clumps of... They're just a clump. It's, it's, it's them and Swiss chard. I forget the proper name for them. But within that are a few seeds. So you'll see them, and they pop up like 
two or three from one seed, and eventually you want to thin out and let one grow and be really strong. It's cool. But, yeah, it's super cool. But, and then, like, the lettuce seeds and the green seeds, all those, they are the, they're like air. It's the tiniest yeah, seed you've nothing. ever seen. Yeah. And when you get a seed packet, it's impossible to plant one per, like, three inches. You have to literally just kind of scatter them and hope they don't blow away with the wind before you cover them with soil. So, far, fall garden reset. We had a good time. We were sore for a couple of days. We already have the kale and broccoli in. We'll do a reset on the big oh, beds. We got butter crunch. Oh, yeah. We have another kind of lettuce, I forget. Rad- radicchio. Yeah, radicchio. We have red kale, um, leaf kale. That's a Russian kale, right? Cur- the no, red Russian? Kale. No, it's not red Russian. I got oh, the purple. Right. Oh, um, right. It was purple kale and uh, curly kale. They didn't have any... Um, of the other thing. What is it called? The dino kale. It's the best kale ever. Yes. I think we have dino kale seeds. Okay. So we order all of our seeds from Burpee. Um, but a lot of people use Baker, I think is what it's called. I don't know. I haven't looked into that. But there's also St. Clair's is um, one I found last year. I really liked. She had a lot of beans. And I ordered a whole bunch of beans. But obviously not a fall crop. Right. Um I found a bunch of local ones. There's a Southern Exchange, see, Southern Seed Exchange. They have really great ones, too, for our region. Because that's the other thing. You don't want to order. I ordered garlic last year, and it was a complete flop. Because you want to get your garlic in in the fall, and then you let it, like, kind of shoot up a little bit. But you don't want it to shoot up so much that a frost would hurt it. And then by spring, like, well, late summer, you can harvest it. I guess midsummer. I, we had nothing. We had nothing. The chickens peeled up some, but I but planted... The, we had some, and the chickens ate it. It's just like the strawberries. Yeah. The chickens got in the thing, and they destroyed it. So if we would actually keep the chickens out, then we would probably get some garlic. Cause but I planted two rows of it, and not one of them popped up. And I am convinced that even though I looked and it said it was for our zone, it just didn't work out in our zone. Because you plant a garlic clove in the soil and that creates your garlic the garlic clove is the seed and they can rot out it's very easily rotted outable <laughs> so things like that that was the thing it requires forethought like if i plant this now oh, it all does yeah for sure then by next summer i can have garlic but i have heard that fresh garlic is incredible so yeah. i really really want to do that too so we'll we'll work on all of that. We still have our fifty by five. I didn't realize it was that wide. Um, beds to to play in. And our, our I mean, we're in Savannah. Our squash is still going. I mean yeah, it is. It's crazy. I'm kinda and then, done with the squash. It's kinda time for it to go away. Oh my gosh. We've eaten so much squash. And we still have some more. We're gonna have to donate some. But and then we and we have the seminal pumpkins this year and I'm really excited because yeah, those are doing well. I'm gonna cook them. Yep. Um they're cooking pumpkins. Make some pie. <laughs> I was you were doing, I you were making bread. No, I, my birthday was last week, and I made a butternut squash pumpkin bread mixture because I only had two pumpkins that were ready, um, and I had a million butternut squash. So I made a pun- butternut squash pumpkin bread cake with a pumpkin fluff on the side with fresh whipped cream from a raw cream um, dairy that we found. Oh my gosh. It was divine. And it, we don't eat sugar. We don't eat white sugar anymore or white flour. So it was all with wheat flour, which I know you're not supposed to bake with, but I do, and it's fine. And then um, I use a sugar substitutes, so maple syrup or honey or cane syrup because that's local. And I don't use a lot. It's, and I used to, I remember when I started baking like this, I was like, this is gross. Like, this doesn't taste good. And as I progressed, I got better at it because you have to figure out your ratios. It's all very different, especially since your sh- white sugar is is dry, but you're using a wet sugar, and that changes your ratio of other things. Anyway, when you finally nail it, I, like someone asked me, they said, you, you can't eat cake. I said, no, you know, normal cake gives me a headache now with the sugar. They said, so what did you make? And I told them, and they, they turned up their nose and said, ew. I said, well. It was my birthday, and I wanted to make my cake, and it was far from it. It was so good that we froze the rest of it because we're going to eat it again. So, anyway, you're not you're not confined to the pies and the soups and whatever it comes to with the pumpkin and the the gourds, I guess. 
So, anyway. Aren't they squashes? Not Pumpkins? Gourds. Aren't squashes gourds? I don't think squashes are gourds. I'm pretty sure they are. Look it up. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't even have my phone. It's right oh, there. I do have my phone. We'll have to look it up when we're done. Anyway, cool. we we have exhausted the topic. I'm pretty sure. Do we have? Did we leave I anything we were else? Just talking about chicken poop. We were. We started with poop, and now we're talking about baking. Well, it was a garden I don't reset. Bacon poop. It was a garden reset. Mm. So, do you have anything else to add? No, other than just you know, don't be scared of the work. It's fun. Don't be scared of the work, and don't be scared of the failure. Oh, for sure. That's the greatest thing ever. Because you're going to mess this up. Because you're just going to mess this up. And even more important that you're going to mess this up, Mother Earth is going to mess this up for you. Yeah. I mean, some years just things... It's just something's not going to work work. or something's Mm -hmm. not going to do well. Like, seriously, I was talking to somebody from Oklahoma two days ago. And we're in Georgia. They're in Oklahoma. I said something about our tomatoes sucked. And they said, everyone's tomatoes sucked. Okay. How is that possible? How is the people in Georgia and the people in Oklahoma are all complaining about tomatoes? And they had tomatoes? a dry summer, right. and we had a wet summer. Right. And so either way, you're you're just just, just the way this works. You're at the mercy so of... You just do the best you can. You eat what weather. you have. You preserve what you have. And it's just the way it is. So don't get discouraged. Just enjoy what you get. And um, just try hard and focus and pay attention to it, all that fun stuff. And it's, uh, it's really fun. Yeah. And you can never plant enough kale. Let's leave you with that tip. Because kale is not just a salad green. No. It is sautéable. <laughs> I like adding the bowls to words. It is... What else can you do with kale? Eat it. Okay. I just eat You're it. literally looking up, I, is pumpkin a gourd? Yes. What is it? It's a gourd. It is, in fact, a type of squash, but it's also a gourd. There we go. Okay. <laughs> so moral All of right. the story, ladies and gentlemen, we were both right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank y'all for listening, and... Hey, if you have any garden questions, I am no expert, but I am happy to either help or well, at least direct tell you. you how or... we screwed it up. Yeah, exactly. I don't know who told us we could do a podcast because we've made a lot of mistakes, but I'm pretty sure that's how the game goes. So that's part of life. Yeah. All right. So thanks for listening, y'all. We'll talk to you later. Bye.